Hello, my dear comrades. Welcome to the Bonefields Location Guide. As a masochist myself, personally, I have fond memories of this region, with it often providing some of the most beautiful wildlife photos imaginable. But is it any good for building a base, though? Are the dangers of this region worth the risk? Was the Second Empire justified in its oppression of Caucasians? In this video, we'll answer some of these important questions. The Bonefields occupies a good portion of the southern coast of the map, and it's also centrally located on the southern coast. Its neighboring region, the High Bonefields, makes up its own zone just north as well. Experts today do not know the origin of the name High Bonefields, but what we do know is that the terrain there is more mountainous, while the Bonefields is flatter with scattered plateaus. While some parts of the bone fields are barren, a good portion of the region does have arid fertility at around 60 to 80 percent, which is more than enough to farm successfully. This also means that the tried and true diet of chew sticks and dust switches will likely be what your squad produces for food if you live here. No one would fault you though if you only ate dried meat in the bone fields because there are plenty of ways to obtain that and we'll get into that later. Stone and water in the bone fields does vary but just as with fertility you can expect to find areas that have all the stone and water that you'll need. Iron and copper are of good quality but you may have trouble finding copper specifically. The high bone fields has more copper so if you do want more than one copper vein, you're going to want to take a look at the high bone fields instead of the bone fields. Now, as you probably already know, the wildlife in the bone fields is very unique in comparison to other regions. Honestly, it resembles the Leviathan Coast a fair bit. But the bone fields is even more dangerous than the Leviathan Coast because most animal spawns in the bone fields are hostile. This is coupled with the fact that all animals in the bone fields can spawn in larger groups than usual. This can lead to some truly dangerous situations. So to account for this, I'm gonna be putting a group size ranking in parentheses based on how large the inflated groups for a spawn can be. Starting off, we have Garu, which is the only spawn in the bone fields which is truly neutral. All other animals will be territorial or hostile. Although you'll likely be preoccupied with defending yourself against other animals, Garu still make for good hunting and training targets. Their loot is substantial and their combat abilities are above average without being too challenging. If anything, you're going to be thankful that Garu are around because they will attack other hostile animals without posing any threat to you. This can provide you with opportunities for free loot after a battle between Garu and another animal species has taken place. And before we get into some of the nastier animals in the bone fields, let's talk about leviathans for a brief moment. It's worth noting that you will see them from time to time, and how they venture down from the leviathan coast is one of life's greatest mysteries. But alas, here they are. Leviathans are a superb way to train ranged characters, and if you do manage to take one down, their leviathan pearls are worth a good bet. Given that leviathans are ridiculously tanky and deal high damage, you'd likely be able to find more efficient ways to make money, but it's still satisfying to reach a stage in the game where you can unalive your first leviathan. The first hostile mob we're going to be covering here are skin spiders. In short, these abominations are what would happen if you took a skimmer and lowered its HP and speed, I would say. Now that might not sound too bad, but their damage and group size can present a huge issue if they are able to catch up to you. I suppose they're weaker compared to some of the other spawns we're going to discuss, but I wouldn't underestimate them, especially in larger groups. As for bone dogs, I usually recommend that they be avoided due to their good combat strength and low loot value, and this is doubly true for the bone fields. Bone dogs can have pack sizes in the bone fields that are over 10, and they're so slow that you're just best off not bothering them. I will say though that getting third partied by a horde of bone dogs is true nightmare fuel. After all, some of them are probably hungry. Best be reloading a save file at that point. And of course, since bone dogs weren't scary enough, the bone fields has a unique wolf spawn that is essentially a bone dog upgraded. More HP, better combat rating, more damage, and higher speed to boot. Don't fight these things unless you know what you're doing. They can take a good bit of damage and their attacks are quick, just like bone dogs. Having said that, their loot is much better than bone dogs, so don't rule out hunting them if you're up for the challenge. Well, at long last, we have reached what is by far the premier enemy of the Bonefields, that being the Beak Thing. In the Bonefields, you'll find their nests on a regular basis, and their patrols can have inflated spawn sizes just like the other animal spawns. For me personally, I've had plenty of oh sh moments when a big group of Beak Things appeared all of a sudden and ruined my day. When in these kind of situations, it's best to run to Morn or Katun, whichever's closer, say a prayer, 
and then hope that along the way you'll be able to kite the beak things into something something else like another group of animals mixed in with the threat of beak things is the monstrosity that is the elder beak thing you know how bosses in the game are usually at marked locations on the map in a building well elder beak things have no address and will not hesitate to make you regret all of your life decisions if you move through their territory in the bone fields while elder beak things are easy to spot they are hard to deal with if they spot you first their run speed exceeds even high quality prosthetics and even well-trained squads will struggle to deal with their combat strength just to run some numbers real quick, Elder Beak Things have the highest speed among all animals in the game. Their attack value is comparable to a Holy Nation Inquisitor or United City Samurai Gate Guard. Their damage is comparable to that of a Leviathan. And their HP is around that of a, the Mega Raptor on Raptor Island. Yeah, it's not a good look. But if you do capture one, you'll never have to worry about base attacks again. For the humanoid spawns, you'll see Gorilla Bandits and Band of Bones. When these factions' strength is measured up against the wildlife in the bone fields, they're just a mere footnote. They're just not that important. For what it's worth, their loot isn't very good anyway, so it's not worth it to fight them if you do have a choice. If it turns out that you do have a masochistic urge like me, you might be tempted to settle in the bone fields yourself. All jokes aside, the bone field still remains a good base area, for the mid or late game, if you know what you're doing. The arid fertility is certainly high enough to produce food for your squad, and the amount of raw meat and hide available from hunting animals is superior to pretty much any other region, save for maybe the Leviathan Coast. There's also a massive difference between fighting wildlife outside city walls and fighting them inside city walls. Most animals can't enter buildings and will simply give up on the chase if you go indoors. Turret defenses go a long way as well, since they inflict a lot of bleed damage and the animals have no harpoon resistance due to them being unarmored. I guess, to be fair, the biggest problem with settling the bone fields, aside from the danger, is Shem. Shem is flatter, safer, more central, and it offers arid fertility just as the bone fields does. My counter to this stance, though, would be that if you settle the bone fields, you can position yourself closer to end game content. Also, being close to Catan is nice because it offers more shop variety compared to Flats Lagoon. All that being said, if you want to settle the bone fields, I was able to find some great settlement locations for both the bone fields and the high bone fields. These locations on the coast are perfect if you want to stage an invasion of the Royal Valley or the Fishman Isle. Meanwhile, these other locations in the high bone fields are more central on the map and aren't too far from Catun, Morn, and Flats Lagoon. Personally, I've settled the bone fields multiple times during my different playthroughs. I like the challenge and rewards that go along with being in the middle of a National Geographic special. Once you have walls up, it ain't too bad. Setting up a base in the bone fields is certainly far easier than the Fishman Isle, and I'd almost measure the difficulty as being similar to the Fog Islands. Yes, beak things are stronger than fogmen, but beak things can't enter buildings, so you have an edge on them as soon as you build that first small shack. Then, once you have your first building with harpoons on top, hostile animals pretty much have to leave your base unless they want to turn into Swiss cheese. Are my rationalizations for the bone fields pure copium? Probably, but I think the bone fields presents a unique challenge to those in the mid to late game. Your first elder beak thing encounter and your first beak thing horde fight will likely be some of your most memorable experiences in Kenshi. By most metrics, the bone fields is as dangerous as the game gets until you head into the end game content. For that reason, I enjoyed at first being scared, then hesitant, then curious, and finally experienced when it comes to navigating through the bone fields. There's just something about that difficulty progression that I really enjoy. Well, what do you think though? Are the bone fields a heck no for you? Or are you open to the idea of fending for yourself out here? Let me know in the comments section below. Also, be on the lookout for polls for this channel too. I try to make two videos a month which are purely based on community feedback via polls. You can also use the link in the description to directly get in touch with me or the community using Discord. Best of luck in your Kenshi journey, and I will see you next time.